In this lecture, we are going to learn how we can modify the app to show the current time. Before we jump into this video, go to training.mammothinteractive.com. Here you can sign up for the Mammoth Unlimited membership and get access to all of the courses we've ever created. That's over 2,000 hours of content. First, I am going to increase the size of my text to make it easier for you to see. So on my text object here in the content view Swift file, I am going to grab the text object and add to it a font property. I'm going to use the system font and set its size to 70. That is going to increase the size of that text that appears here inside of my preview. Okay, and you can even change it to 100 or whatever you'd like to make it easier to see. Okay, now let's change that high instead to say the current time. So for that, I am going to build out a function to help me here. So inside of my body, I am going to first create a variable that says the current time. So it's called the current time. And I'm going to use a function called get current time. This is a function I'll have to create myself. Then instead of showing the text high, I'm going to show the current time. So I will actually pass in the current time variable like so. Now currently we have no preview because we need to build this function get current time if I want to actually be able to use it. I have to build that helper function. So we can just put the helper function into this file. It doesn't have to be inside of the struct. It could just be inside of the file. So let's create a function called get current time. That is the function name and it takes in no parameters, but it could take in parameters if you wanted to in these parentheses. Okay, and this function is going to return a string. So it's going to store a string. And here we can use this arrow, which is just a dash and a, an alligator bracket or a greater than sign. And the type it's going to return is string. So that's how we can specify the type of returns. Then we open up the function body with curly brackets. Then we can already return something here. We can just return time just to test this out. Now we can save the file with command S or just file save if you want to recompile and you can refresh the preview. Now the preview can take a bit of time to refresh the first time that you make a big change. So just be patient here as it updates. So here we're going to create a variable called current time and we're going to call the function get current time which returns a string. Then we can show that in the preview. So let's just refresh our preview and wait for it to load. Okay, there we go. So you sometimes have to refresh the preview a couple times. If it's not showing you any error message, then you would see an error message in the code or you would see an error message up here in the top of Xcode. But if it's not showing you that, then it just means you have to refresh the preview. And also if you fix an error message but it doesn't seem to change anything, then just save the file and keep refreshing the preview. You could even run the app as well. Okay, so now we can see we have time appearing here, but we just have the text time. How do we actually show the current time? Like if it was 10 a.m., how would we show that? Well, we're not just going to return a literal string like this. We're going to return the time. So we can use Swift UI features and functionality to get the time. First, I am going to create a variable called formatter and use the date formatter object. Okay, then I am going to create a variable called the date string and I am going to here take my formatter and convert to a string from the current date. So if when you call the date object like this, when you create a date object, you get the current date and the current date actually includes the time. So we're taking the current date, which includes the time, and we're formatting it into a string with the date formatter. So the date formatter just takes a date object and formats it into a string because we want to return the string data type. You'll get this warning that we never actually use date string currently. So we're going to return the date string. That will remove the warning. Okay, then just wait a moment here. You can save the file and you can refresh your preview. Just wait a few seconds here. You see the warning disappears. Then we can wait for the preview to update as well. Currently, we see nothing in the preview because for this formatter, we actually have to specify the time style. 
So I'm going to take my formatter variable and I'm going to set time style to equal dot short. Okay, that is going to display for me the time now, 11.06 a.m., my current time. You could also use dot long. Okay, and wait a moment here. And now it shows you 11.06.41 a.m. PDT. So, so it tells me the hour, the minute, the second, then we have a.m., and then my Pacific time. So this tells me the time zone as well. All right, so you have to set the time style if you want to actually show the time. And notice here, we don't actually see the date, so it's a bit confusing, but the date formatter here is actually for the time if you convert it to a string. It's not called the time formatter. All right, so there we go. Now we're able to show the current time in our app, 1107 a.m. That is the current time. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to go to training.mammothinteractive.com. Here you can sign up for the Mammoth Unlimited Membership, where you can get access to over 350 courses that we've created.